I thought. Try to just like focus on like the the emptiness and like the you know like the yana instead of the the vipassana, like the absorption instead of the insight or yeah, I think that's as good as I can describe it. The difference between Zen and Buddhist meditation. Well, yeah, I mean, kind of like what Sam said, that it focuses, or, and also kind of what I know, a lot of it focuses on posture and koan, and rather than necessarily like cultivating a path or maybe like mm. you're doing it your own. A lot of um, silence. Mm. So, Buddhist meditation, uh, in conserv conservative explanation, it has two main tradition: vipassana, as in mindfulness practice, and samatha, I mean concentration. Concentration is mean when you know when we focus on our mind in one object. Mindfulness, we focus one object at a time, and that's that the conservative approach that has two conditions mindfulness and concentration is it clear now right mm -hmm. but when it's talk about zen yeah buddhist meditation spread from india to china start from uh, not only from uh, buddha dharma but could some scholar is spread uh, in the early times but it get more popular when Buddha Dhamma came in the um, fourth, fifth century. So Buddha Dhamma, he advocates that um, whoever practicing should focus on the practice, not focus much on the books, the scripture, the teaching, okay. and focus on the, the practice. That's why I say that um, Zen transmission uh, um, without the life on any scripture. And so, like, what, Pure Land falls somewhere in between that? Mm, kind of, yeah. And But later on, later on, before he passed away, according to the Zen tradition, he, uh, he passed on one particular sutra, one set of sutra. Even he said that Zen transmission without any um, uh, scripture. And that's why uh, uh, Zen getting popular, but later on they get they may get lost because there's no scripture foundation for them to follow. And even they split out from Bodhidharma to this to the Sith patriarch Huynang, right? And from Huynang they split out. You see this five houses right here: one, two, three, four, and five. So the Lin Chi still survive now. Lin Chi and Kao Dong, it, it's, when it spread to Japan, it's it called Rin Chai. Kao Dong is spread to, so, to Japan, it's called Soto. Um, so these are the most popular ones. It, it still survive to now. Mm. And uh, according to the um, uh, Zen tradition, they use all kind of um, holistic practices uh, like um, we use what they call public taste or the Kong An you know, that what that we call public case or or the questions that in trigger or trigger the people not thinking but to contemplate about. Okay. You know Newton, right? Mm -hmm. When he sat under the apple trees, right? Mm -hmm. He did not think, but he come to play he, about whichever subject in his mind. But somehow, when the apple dropped on his head, boom, he recognized. That's what Zen tradition is about. Of course, it's to follow different one. For the Zen time, they focus more on the sun, more on the, the stray mm, methods. Like, is that what Satori is? What is that? So it's a 
S S the moment of enlightenment. S A T O R I. Uh -huh. Restore. Hmm. Yeah. So do they just not like with certain tradition? Are they just not like acknowledging the scripture at all? It's just they are, like, they acknowledge, but they they discourage their student to to study okay. because they still focus more on the practice. Uh, and uh, when Zen tradition become popular in China, right here is that they have uh, northern and southern tradition. Northern tradition is more graduate enlightenment, a step by step enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Southern tradition is more certain enlightenment. That's what they have with the uh, Huynang here. Right. Uh, uh, ben, you follow Ben? Mm. And Stephen, you follow, right? You follow yes, my no, okay. Nation, that's what. That's what here we have um, in the book. Uh, we have, um, yeah, in Vietnam, it spread from China uh, and it spread to Korea, it spread to Japan. Rin Chai is Rin Chi, Soto Kao Dong. This is school here. Yeah, you get the uh, study. Trip. Yes, Ben, what do you want to ask? Um, just uh, what what's the main difference between uh, Zen and what you practice the Mahayana? Uh, one more time, Zen focus more on the practice. Mahayana focus, of course, more on the practice and the scripture. Um, plus, um, Mahayana, especially Bodhisattva, you need to be proactive. No. Hmm. no you cut away by yourself, but then so you need to help others. Oh yes. Not just not just sit there and meditate. You have to, you to step do out. something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's different. For for Zen tradition, they would not care much. They get focused on their practice. Um yeah. Is there one story about um a Chinese um officers after he have some kind of awakening, he dumped everything uh, onto the river. He, he dumped his uh, gold uh, and treasury because he, he let go of them. Uh, so that he can, um, he could move on in his practice instead of attaching them. So if you were him, would you dump everything onto the river or would you keep for yourself uh, what should you do with that then? I think like that's like the absolute letting go of everything all at once kind of approach. But I think it would be better to like donate it instead of throw it in the river. Okay. And Stephen, what do you think? If you were him, would you dump everything uh, into the river and you'd be free from those attachments? Or what should you do with those... Um, treasure that you may have um i'm more what you sam just said they're more of donation for the needy uh the poor who can't afford uh treatment for medication or whatever that there would be more worthwhile is to donate to the needy so, so. yeah rubaya what do you think same as steven for sure i don't if i had that many riches Hmm. Where's Kristen? What do you think? I think Rukaya froze. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's just back to normal. Yeah. The Kristen, what do you think? Um. I, well, of course, I would donate as much as I could, but there's this uh, like Ram Dass lecture about where he was traveling the country and he had all these like bands of stuff that would follow him around from place to place. Place that sort of like made him, it was like all, yeah, his stuff. And finally, I guess he decided to set it on fire. Every time I hear that story, it just like makes me sob. I love it. Where's <laughs> the girl in my stuff? Like, Where's the bell? Uh, Ram, Ram Das, he was like a spiritual leader from the 60s and 70s. Uh, he's professor i don't know you can listen to his lectures on youtube they're very nice and um one of them yeah is where 
he talks about taking all of his stuff and just lighting it on fire and like that be just he burned all of him. Oh, just, yeah. It's, it's, they kind of like had a party and they burned all of his stuff because like he knew that wasn't like really him. Yeah. He just, He's still survive now? No, he died. He died. Uh, I don't know. Was it the last time? Oh, no. But yeah, he's very famous uh, for spreading, uh, how they describe Buddhism in it. Mm -hmm. There's a documentary on Netflix, Ram Dass does. Really? So, yeah. yeah, there's a, a ton of it. You can tons. What his name again? Ram Dass. Oh, Ram Dass. Uh, okay, how about his name? How about you, um, Ben? Yes, I'm here with you. Um, so I'm thinking, and it's kind of going off of what you've taught me and what Kirsten's talking about. So, um, like I listened to Eckhart Tolle, which is like another kind of spiritual leader. And at once he, he was European and he uh, he talks about the attachment to identity. And at one time he was homeless and he would sleep on park benches. And he said that that's like the most freeing thing for him. You know, at that time he had no identity, no job, no material possessions. But then he, you know, but now he's like a spiritual teacher. And when I first met you, I was going through a rough time. I had literally lost everything in my life that was material. Um, I had to live with my parents again, uh, and I was like really broken. And I, I met you, Ty, and uh, you just, I just, I asked you like, um, what's the difference between like stewardship, like holding, having things, and a, like attachment? And you said you, and you like, you like pulled out your phone. You're like, we're given these phones. Like, you don't just like throw it against the wall and break it. You know, like we're given these, uh, we're given this technology and these items for, like for a purpose. And what I got is like, we, we have to use them to help out other people. So um, not just sit underneath a tree and do nothing. Mm. Yeah. What do you think? I, I agree with them. I, I like that. I feel like I want to do the same thing. I mm. want to spread it around as much as possible. Mm. So what happened when you take care of the pet, especially the dog or cat, they run away from you and they get lost? Uh, Are you sure they yeah. have yeah. insurance call for that? No, I've never like actually lost uh, like many, many, many years ago. I almost did, but um, uh, that's what I was going to say. A cat almost I, ran away from me. I mean, I mean, I'm now, I'm, <laughs> I've had some really like <laughs> I've had of course you know some crazy I have crazy horse stories. Horses they are pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Horses do crazy things. So um but the dogs and cats I have So is one cobalt that or no? But to, I think to a certain degree, because I'm not exactly how that policy, but yeah, I've got some sort of insurance policy that if I do mm. anything negligent, then um, mm. there's like some sort of like financial damage my insurance covers. Mm. And what happened if um, some customer, they uh, ask for your service, and they don't uh, pay. Well, my customers don't even get to book <laughs> until they pay. They don't even get to save a spot or anything. And oh, they I, have to pay first? They have to pay first. Oh. And I have it set up where um, I do also have like package services. So my customers like pay in bulk oh. quite a bit of time. Oh, how about you? They set up, they pay, you set up, they pay. They don't always pay me first, but I've never ran into an issue. So oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's your place. I feel like if I did, I probably just wouldn't provide service again. Oh, really? and be like, okay. Well, yeah. You, yeah. you, you can take into the small things for yeah. the services too. But I like, yeah, get a service contract, yeah. all that, you know, get that. <laughs> and if somebody doesn't agree to pay you ahead of time, like, 
There's so many people that are going to do yeah. that. <laughs> you don't mess around that. <laughs> so Ben, most of the time, all the time, they pay you first before you deliver the the uh, material, right? You better give me that money. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just how it works. They, they pay online, huh? First time. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all on the app nowadays, so it's it's safer. I don't have to carry cash on me. Yeah, and Steven, let's say if um somehow you work overtime and the company they don't pay for that, you you complain for that. Uh, not really complain, but somewhat bring up to it about um, what hard work is about. M maybe not monetary unit. I'm just happy with time off. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would actually be very appreciative of time off. That to me is even worth much more than money. So instead of yeah, just give me a day off, two days off, mm -hmm. I'm more than happy. More right. like <laughs> Happened to you before? Uh, my first professional job. Um. I was salary, so they did not pay um, uh, overtime. So, but the, most of the bosses we're working for, they paid in comp times, which is basically time off. And I remember one year, um, I had 21 days off in December, almost a whole month. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but yes, it was very um, well deserving was comp time. So, that nice again some. Sometimes it's not easy, right? Hey, Sam, it's not easy if um, you work and they don't pay. Uh, if um, somehow you lost something, right? it's not easy to handle, right? Yeah. Mm. I was thinking more about the original like story with the Chinese officer who had like a sudden moment of enlightenment and threw all the gold away. I think that it's definitely not the best option in all situations, but maybe in his situation, he knew that he had to get rid of it all right away, you know, because otherwise if he, if he delayed and he was like, I need to do it in like a slow organized way, maybe he thought that the attachment would come back. And so that's why he did it so fast. Cause I know in the past, like kind of like Ben said, like I had a time in like 2021 when I lost like almost everything I owned, like 90, five percent of everything I owned and uh you know I miss some of it sometimes but most of it I don't even miss but if if it hadn't all happened at once in like a crazy situation I would still be burdened with most of that stuff and now I'm glad that most of it's gone like I'm glad that almost all of it is gone right before the eclipse I took a truckload of stuff out of my uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember many years ago I watched a movie. I talked about a millionaire at that time. It was a millionaire. They somehow were meeting with uh, his friends, and he he stayed with the homeless people for I think for a week or four months. I forgot. Uh, so um, so after he got back. Uh, he won. He won that bet, and he appreciated more mm -hmm. the lifetime that uh, he spent with the homeless people. He appreciated his food, mm -hmm. his bed, his yeah. water, and so forth and so forth. So later on, when he got back to his millionaire's lifestyle, he helped so many homeless people. Again, when we're free, we we don't have anything. We we really appreciate what we have. Well, we have a lot, we may not. Right. It's very true. Mm -hmm. but it's just one way. Right. Mm. Mm. Uh, how about Rubaya? Have you ever encountered any kind of things that you may lose something? They may, you may have lost something, uh, or you, you may yeah. have broken something that is so valuable and so forth. What's your feeling? I crashed my car. I crashed my first car. It was oh. Mini Cooper. It was so nice. It was so nice. Mm -hmm. I was on my way to work and I ran the red light and I smacked into a truck and I got out the car and I was like, the first thing was like, my parents spent so much money on this car. What is this going to do to them? Like, oh my God, oh my God. And it was 
crazy because it was right around the same time I was, ooh, I froze. Right around the same time that I was learning about like detachment from material things, like learning not to attach to anything. And so I lost my mind for like the first two hours. I was like, I don't have a car. I didn't even have this car for more than a year. Yeah. And then like a week went by and I was like, it's just metal. It's literally just metal. And I realized I was like, I can put into practice what I've been learning and learn to detach from that car. So very quickly, I got over that. I got over crashing, crashing my car. And um, it was more over like having more of appreciation for my parents and how much they spend. So now it's like when I talk about getting me a car or anything, I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I really don't need it. And it kind of helped me uh, slow down a bit because I was always busy. I was always going somewhere. I'm always out. I'm always partying. I'm always this, this, and that. So when I didn't have my car anymore, it was like, I have to walk places. So I'd walk to the park. That was the closest thing nearby. So I started to spend more time outside and less time doing things that weren't good for me. So it brought up brought upon really good, really good things. So, so uh, an insurance company, they... Uh they pay for that total loss it was like kind of messy afterwards because i remember i was in target and the old, old guy's insurance company because i hit like a 80 83 year old veteran he was fine but he was old and his insurance company called me and was trying to trick me i don't know i think i got sued i don't know what happened with it my parents handled it but we're fine now i think i don't i don't know that stuff's really tricky It's very tricky. Mm -hmm. Especially during the COVID-19, many of my students, they will understand depression because um, mm -hmm. especially some of them, they were senior and they're ready to graduate and looking for the job or having the ship or corporate and so forth. So everything stopped. So they didn't know what happened in So they saw the press. And some of them, they died. They, they commit suicide and they harm themselves and so forth. It's not easy to deal when you have everything in your life, but suddenly you have nothing. That's not easy. Mm -hmm. I loved um, it. I don't know. Maybe I'm a rare bird. I had like like all kinds of spiritual growth. I I really didn't like I needed that I needed that break from the matrix so bad. I think I I, I, yeah. I needed it so bad and like I just like when I look back in into the success of, of like really positive things that got me to where I am like for me and I know that being sort of weird blessing although like i really do you know i did have a lot of friends that parents that died from it so i also understand the heaviness and people that didn't like i'm very compassionate about that mm -hmm. mm, that's not easy right mm, that's why that's why um if we don't recognize life is permanent it's not easy to handle mm, when we lost everything when something struck us Mm, accidentally. Mm, mm. All right, so let's just uh, move on to the next uh, part. Mm. Let's see here. Mm. Mm. Sorry, this is the um. Yeah. Um. Go ahead, Ben. You need. You can read. Okay. Well. Zen approaches to meditation. Uh, meditation has always been central to Zen practice. The very name Zen derives from a Sanskrit word for meditation. Yet, there has always been a certain degree of controversy within Zen over the way meditation is defined and the extent to which practice is essential to the attainment of enlightenment. Okay, Initially, the is up there. Yeah. So, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Zen means meditation, and, and 
uh, how does one get enlightened in meditation? There's probably like a million different philosophies on that. So um, that's uh, that's all I got. Yeah, so one more time, in Zen tradition, in, in meditation tradition, it's many ways for us to do the practice. So you published that book? I did. I published it. Mm -hmm. in, uh, anyone people, yeah, anyone people, bought that yet? People, yeah, I actually put a number of people. I haven't looked exactly at the count, but I have heard back from quite a number of people that... Uh, they read the book? Yeah. They bought the book? They love the book. <coughs> um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy about that. Yeah, yeah. In Zen meditation or um, Buddhist meditation, there's many ways for us to practice. Not only sitting in meditation, but we can walk, we can stand. While we're driving, of course, our mind under driving when you do gardening, right? Focus on gardening. Maybe running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whenever. We are in tune with whatever we're doing. That's what meditation is about. Mm -hmm. uh, when you take care of your pet, you know, in detail, that, that's meditation too. How mm. about when you tutor the children, they everywhere, they're so noisy. Is that easy? <laughs> is it easy for you to <laughs> straight one? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good thing. But I don't know if I would say that I'm usually able to be in very zen state. Yeah, you know, kids, you have to sort of hang on for the ride. Yeah, they they take up all of the part of my brain. They take up my whole brain when I'm around them. And yeah, you too. If you're too much focusing, you're going to get it. Um, so one day, he gave them the chance to um, play around. They're more crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They the whole making them like stand up or or face something or something to punish them wasn't working. So I was like, what if I make them stand on one leg? What if I make them stand and spin? And that just made them more hyper. Have I should have known. Okay. But I was trying to get creative. <laughs> what we did in middle school, I don't know if you want to do this now, where the teacher would draw the circle up high, so you had to stand up high and keep your nose in the circle. And you were not allowed to like drop your nose out of that circle. Your your calves were, and every time he'd see like put your the legs down, he made you stand up too. Mm, you can apply that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. So Ben, while you're driving, you think you can uh, concentrate easily, or you have a lot of distraction? Oh man, I. I have to focus because I get, I'm, I'll am i be honest, like I'm not in a Zen state when I'm driving. I'm like, get out of my way, bro. I'm like, get the, get the food. And, but when I, when I, uh, after things settle down or if it's a slower time um, and my mind is focused, like you do get into that, into that flow state, uh, into that really deep uh, meditation state. But for me, I'm always thinking like, I need to be aware of everything. That's why I want to buy a Tesla. So it just drives for me. Self-drive, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yes, self-driving. Uh -huh, self-driving. Um, how about uh, Stephen at work? Yeah, it's easy to focus or a lot of distraction, a lot of uh, problem occur, you have to stop. Uh, no, I am pretty focused. Um, I multitask a lot, meaning even though I'm focused on one specific task, I'm also focusing on a lot of things all at the same time. Uh, but um, work to me, I have no problem like other distracting to, to get you away from the actual work that is. Uh, no, that has never happened. So uh, I've always been blessed to where I'm pretty focused you know, even including driving and everything. But uh, I have do have to make comment of what Ben say something about what's a self-driving. <laughs> self-driving is good to an intent, but at the same time, we have to remember that we still have to uh, take over when it's necessary because it's there to help us technology. However, again, it's still technology uh, guiding us things will happen and it is not 100% perfect. Uh, and I've seen so many accidents that has happened. So um, 
and uh, Ben, I do own the Tesla. Um, not too long ago because I'm just sick and tired of paying gases, all the gas prices, and uh, um, so far um, it's going good. But again, you have to pay attention, even though with the full self driving, I'm still not a hundred percent confident. But um, it's good just to help out for a short distance. <laughs> More about that. So, um, Rubaya, you learned from that accident. Uh, you need to be mindful, right? Very, very mindful. I don't rush anywhere. And living in Houston, it's like, that's probably the worst place to be for driving. Horrible. Um, but I, I take my time now and I, I drive like very close to the wheel. Like I'm like old. I I drive very close to the wheel now, so it it, it definitely changed a lot, mm. and, and um, I I feel more appreciative. I look at it as more of like a privilege, like I'm privileged to be driving this right now. Like even down here, it's it's getting it's gonna get so hot. There's a lot of homeless people, a lot of people outside who have to walk, have to wait for the bus. Even though I don't have my own car, I still have transportation, and that's good enough for me. So. It's, yeah, learned mm. a lot. So when you groom uh, the the pet, right? You want to take care of them. Some of them will be more hyper than the children, right? Uh, how, uh, so uh, oh, no. you well, train them. Yeah, well, you know, over the years, because I've been a you know so many types of pets, pets are really angry. I've also had to learn to train myself the reflex not like hit or fight back with an mm. animal that's bit me for I guess for me um, and try to figure like you know a lot of people have this like reflex to fight and and <laughs> I bit I don't even know but I've been bit so many times but like you know I like I know I I don't just out of reflex like I feel like you let me kind of have to go on a meditative state when stuff it, like that happens. It is, well, it is really hard and it takes, I mean, it does. I feel like over the years it's taken practice and and patience and of course going through a whole lot of like scenarios. Uh, but yeah, you have to train yourself to not like fight the animal like it because usually it's out of some sort of that fear, but when they get a hold of you, your natural reef, everything in your body says fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's not, you can't, you can't do that. You have to figure out like, okay, how do I like calm, calm the situation down and like, you know, mm -hmm. get everyone safe. So do you wear any special uh, thick clothes so that um, you can protect your arms? Mm -hmm. uh, thick clothes so that um, no, they will And that, that should get myself... Now I did, I used to have uh, protection trained dogs. I never took bites, but I paid people to take bites from dogs. Oh, really? Yeah, and they would be, wear those big heavy suits. But my dogs were a bit like, my dogs were kind of trained. Mm -hmm. you know, when you walk forward. with other people, dog or pet, right? It may be danger too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, you need to, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, over the years, I've just ended up in just some bad situations just because the volume of it's it's the law of it's the law of averages. It's like I tell people about horseback riding. It's not a matter of if you're going to fall off. It's a matter of like when you you're going to fall off, and to get to the point where you're good good enough to where you're not falling off, you've already, you've had to fall off like. Hmm. So, so there's this like at law of average game you play anytime you expose yourself in these like dangerous situations, hmm. Hmm. and so yeah, it's you gotta you gotta be smart and try to pick what you think is safe and what you're mm -hmm. capable of handling everyone safely and, and know your limits. Hmm. It's not easy right, when you deal with wild dogs, right? 
Mm-hmm. You kind of got to be the wild dog too. <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> this is not easy. At that moment, when they try to buy and, yeah, and bark at you. Yeah, it's not. You have to stay calm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, anyway, so those are the moments we can do with them too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to mention, like, mm. um, last year, I got really into this book, um, Zen and the Art of Archery. It was written, like, the 1900s by, like, this German guy who went to Japan and studied the Zen archery tradition with, like, the, the, the Japanese Zen archery masters. I thought it was really interesting. And I, I liked to shoot the bow when I was in high school. So I bought one. And uh, like the thing that they always says in the book is like the master is always telling him, he's like, you know, don't worry about the target. Don't worry about the arrow. Just focus on your breath and focus on relaxing. And like the, the German guy keeps being like, well, what about my form? What about how I aim? And the master's like, just relax and breathe. And I've been like living that same experience, like with myself, like when I practiced it, because like, um, I don't know what I'm doing. So I did like YouTube, like, you know, some different like advice on how to aim and stuff, but there's like so many different methods. I don't know what to do. And so what I've noticed is just, if I don't think about it, if I just kind of like turn off my brain and just breathe and relax, like I can usually actually do way better than when I'm thinking about it too hard. So it's like a matter of just like, not thinking about it versus thinking about it. It's it's interesting. Yeah. I've, I've heard that, and actually I've heard uh, like some pretty famous people talk about, um, yeah, like a, what a pretty intense meditation uh, archery. Yeah, movie. yeah, he, like there's a line in the book, I can't remember it well enough to quote it, but he's like, the target isn't the target, the target is like yourself and like the Buddha, like you're trying to like get closer to enlightenment by just like learning how to just breathe and turn off your mind. Mm-hmm. So it's like a fun sport for me. Practice. Yeah. And Stephen, sometime, right? When you do the job frequently, right? Sometimes it's boring, right? Or you have a lot of uh, excitement or interest in, in working uh, for that company. Um, yeah, there are some slight boredom a little bit because it's repetitive and uh, but you know i just um accept it as is and you know i just continue to do the best i can you know just to better for, for our department of course and as a general uh uh as a company as a whole to make it uh service better for the customer so but that's just a normal you know you just have to either learn how to accept it so but because if you keep on saying boredom all the time, then it's like, that's just life in general. Everything can be so mundane and routine. Uh, you just have to learn how to accept it and then just go around and move on with it. So, more fun. Yeah. How about Rubai? Yeah, going back to school, is it maybe boring for you? Or do you like to learn more? Um, it's like, I feel like it depends on obviously on the subject, but I I try to put a twist on it to make it interesting for me. Uh, like when I was a kid, I would always like relate it back to um, something that I like, like a show. So if I was like in anatomy, I'd be explaining it in a way that only I could understand by using different characters or something like that. That makes school more enjoyable. But even if I don't enjoy it, I know that I have to get through it to get to the path where I want to be. So it's like, I just kind of endure it. You know, I know it's going to be worth it in the end. So. Like you say that if you don't uh, love dog, there's no way for you to keep up with that profession, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to have like a passion to not be born even when you deal with the wild dog. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. it's all the same. Mm-hmm. With like the good, easy dogs, and maybe mm-hmm. more challenging. Mm-hmm. So every day is a uh, all kind of uh, strengthening happening when you deal with pet. Yeah, I try to be careful of who uh, 
but like right now, and so I don't know if I want to make it back in time actually to make the meditation, but I'm taking care of a, a, a farm and we've got alpacas and pigs, horses, and, um, and I've been taking care of that farm since the mid nineties. Oh wow! Yeah, is that so, where you said the pictures of the alpaca from? Uh -huh. So like those alpacas, I've known the alpacas for like twenty years. That horse, I put, I did post a picture of it. So um, I mean, I was pretty freshly out of college when I trained that horse, and then there's a picture now. So that's a long time. <laughs> Uh, but you know, I over the years, like I've had this horse, like he's he's pretty big, and I've had him like get stuck. Not recently, because now they're all old. <laughs> they're all really old. But when he was younger, like I've had him get stuck in the office. I've had him get stuck in a chicken coop, um, because he opens doors and latches and stuff like that. Oh, um, with his mouth? Yeah, he does, and he's real, and he's real, real wide. <laughs> so he would get himself stuck into these like little tiny places all the time. It's really <laughs> yeah. Um, so, mm. but so far that this sit everything is gone according to plan. But like I know, like over my years of experience, you, yeah. you can't count on things going yeah. according to plan. That's very. Right. And that's why is then that's yeah, that. especially like especially when they're old. I'm not going to list how many um animals I've had. Like, farm animals I've had arranged to have a room farm well that way we got mm -hmm. you know when they passed away or yeah. and he is a nice kid. Mm -hmm. So you know like it's a it, it's a big mm -hmm. it's a big responsibility. Yeah, yeah. it's as for the last was Zen about so as much as we are in tune with things that we're doing, as much as we enjoy or have passion with those things that's Zen. Right. Yeah. If it's boring, that means we have a lot in uh, we spay out, right? Boring. Uh, mm -hmm. boring is a luxury. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's move on to the next one. Yes, yeah, Sam, you like to read the next one? Um, initially. Yeah. Initially the emphasis was very much on seated meditation, Zazen. Uh one early legend of Bodhidharma recounted that the great Patriarch sat for so long that his legs atrophied and fell off. How... Sorry, this is a crazy mental picture. However, the sixth patriarch, Huning, uh, suggested that enlightenment is not dependent on seated meditation, a view propagated by his successors, the Southern School of Chan or Zen. In contrast, adherents of the Northern School believe that gradual enlightenment was the result of a long period of regular meditation practice. Mm. You follow? Yeah. Mm. I've never heard the story about his legs falling off. I've definitely heard the, the famous story Kirsten mentioned last week about like you know, he didn't want his to fall asleep, so he cut his eyelids off. Like mm. I don't know if that story is true or if the leg story is true, if they're both legends. If both of those things happened, he was having a real sacrifice to get there. Um, but um, that's not the middle way. But um, yeah, just just kind of going further on this same theme that like the last part was talking about about how like some Zen practitioners believe in sudden enlightenment that if you just like you know practice. Uh, properly you could become enlightened suddenly but then there's the other traditions or the other viewpoints where they're like you can just kind of become more enlightened over time instead of just like trying to to speed run basically hmm. so actually Buddha he sat facing the wall for nine years yeah. okay. did I show you I show you that little bit yet I don't think you have for him. I knew he, I, I thought for some reason it was seven years instead of nine years. Yeah, but. nine years. Facing for him. And this is uh, the second page of the Fei car. Look at him. It's all in Chinese. I just knew the sound. So he sat uh, inside the, the cave. 
ทันทีเบาเฮสเซตแดนเบาอืมเฮสเฮนิวดาวแดงอืมคานอนดีสุดท้ายดง So Buddhadama, he sat in the cave for nine years, and this monk, he he kneeled out there to seek the teaching from Buddhadama. So this young monk, he offered the food to the monk that uh, kneeled out there under the snow. Um, okay. Um, this one here, I think. Um, let me skip this one. You can you can see. Um, this one. Here. Oops. I think me and Jared watched some of this one. You did? Yeah. Because mm. I remember that actor who plays the like, Bodhidharma, they call him like Damo in Chinese. Yeah. Actually, anyway, so it, it doesn't have that one. Anyway, so um, yeah, according to the legend, you say that he sat nine years facing the wall. Mm. Mm. That looks right, yeah, because that's that actor, same actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not easy, but um, but that's what his practice about, and this encourage encourage other people to do meditation. But later on, Hui Nang or this one here, yeah, he suggested that enlightenment is not depend on uh, sit meditation. We we can do anything. Driving, cooking, you know, tea, you know, tea ceremony. You heard yeah. about that? Mm -hmm. You heard about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very famous in, in Japan. Mm -hmm. They learned from Chinese one, but it's very famous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, uh, Zen Garden? You heard about that? You heard about mm -hmm. that? Again, you know, Zen Garden? No, or San, San, the San, the San, 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 you know about yes, that? Like, uh, I briefly heard about the uh, Zip Garden, yes, but yeah. I'm not 100% familiar with it. Super um, elaborate, but they have lots. I think they have lots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right here, you see that this one here. Mm, they make them like uh, you know that that's why they have bonsai. You know bonsai, right? Mm -hmm. It's very special. That's they they play to relax their mind. Uh, or they um, or if they uh, they plant the tree, they play with the flowers mm -hmm. and so forth. Rubaya, you have you heard about this thing? Yeah, yeah, and I, I've seen like the YouTube videos of it like sped up, and they're um like, taking the rake and they're doing it. It's very it's very satisfying, and uh, um I remember when I was like little, like my mom had an office and she had like one of the, the little like not the toy ones but the mini ones with the little mini rake, and you'll know, take it and make the little swirls and stuff. Um, I never had the patience for it though because. I don't know. I get frustrated easily, but mm -hmm. very beautiful, very beautiful. Yeah. yeah. We we have the path in the front, especially in the summertime. Yeah, we have the flower. We walk around. Right. I got two sections done. Why is that? They said I got two sections done this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the lot the flower be blossom sometime in May or in June, right? Yeah. I mean the the. The green leaves are just now breaking the water. So okay. it, it's it'll probably be in May, you know, in May when it's yeah, it's probably sometime. Out. You can especially when it's warm here, you can take them out, walk around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To enjoy. Otherwise they mm, they mess up. 
the student whenever they come in most of the time I ask them to cook their cell phone, iPad, laptop over there. Not uh, unless they study, unless they get permission from from Sam, they can use them. Otherwise, have to be there. It's tricky too because they'll lie to me and say they're doing homework. And they'll, the they'll, 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 they'll switch back and forth between homework and games. That's the point. So That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you then put your eyes on them, they play. Is you know, that's a children when we were young, right? We went little. They, like, that's that's like what kids do. Is they have they have to test their boundaries. That's how they learn the reality. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It does not matter what it is. Literally, be the light switch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, literally one of the ones playing with the light switch yesterday. Why is that? One of the babies who's playing with the light switch yesterday is like, don't. It's just, it's just that they have to test the boundaries yeah. of it mm -hmm. to find out, like, where in reality does this. Mm -hmm. this be Especially the boy, right? Long. Uh, Pretty much only the boys, beta. actually. The girls are almost never. I have uh, one quick comment when you mentioned about especially for children like you know how put all the cell phone in one area my question is how about all us adults right. what happened if I would like to agree that I don't know about how everyone feels but I want the landline back where there's a physical phone because I feel that back then uh, there was this phrase and I didn't realize it but the phrase was was saying, I don't remember the full phrase, but they were saying something when, when we had a, a landline, we were free. But now with all this cell phone and smartphones, we are kind of like shackled. We're not free anymore because we're so dependent on the technology and all the things of making it easier for do are actually somewhat making us more lazy. <laughs> so, which is why it kind of makes sense. And then, um, I remember landline is like you were physically doing things. Okay, uh, you don't know direction, open up a physical map. You're actually doing it. You're thinking. So, um, which, you know, was uh, fun back then, but technology changes everything. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so you keep your cell phone all the time with you, right? The moment you, you leave is on the table or walk away, you may concern that someone call you. Uh, especially when you do business, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. Like I'm, my phone battery drains really fast. I don't think I, but uh, so I frequently like have to set it down and leave it charging somewhere. And uh, my, no, my ringer is low. Mm -hmm. Again, not. Nothing wrong with technology. Well, if I look, I mm -hmm. think that it'll be, sometimes I think it'll like buzz, like if the, my, like it, it might vibrate, mm -hmm. but like I don't know, actually have, I actually have a ringer for Yeah. Three so years. perhaps maybe sometime next week because we have one, one or uh, one month to go, right? It's getting warm, so mm -hmm. take it now. Yeah, so they enjoy with nature instead of punching. Yeah, yeah especially to Anthony, Dylan, Long. That's not the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Garden today. Want to play video games? He says, "I want to play." <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. You think? Have a yeah, go question. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, a little, a little off topic because I won't talk bad about technology because that's the generation I grew up in. But um, about mm, what is coming up? There's a, uh, you said a couple weeks ago, there's an event coming up. Oh, it's the Buddha's birthday. It's the Buddha's birthday. When is that for your temple? Uh, for the temple of Sugar Land? Houston. In Houston. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I think May 19th. One, May month, 19. Oh, one month from today. When is it here? Okay. Uh, my uh, my twenty seven, my twenty six. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> thank you. Thanks for uh, ask me and remind me. And I need to write the letters and write people. Right. You're so, not going to be in in Houston, right? For it, no. Yeah, yeah, I will be there. You will. You will. Uh, okay. Invite your mom to come back. Okay. Uh, I think she'll be in Mexico. Mm -hmm. But but if we do come, I'm gonna have my brother come, and you have to smile. You have to smile. 
in pictures. People think people think that I hold you hostage when we took a picture together. You look mad. <laughs> so the one that took my glass before, your brother? Mm, yes. The, the yes. Your brother was my former student, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Mm. How you doing, Titch? Uh, now you did. Hope all is well. Great. Same again, if not. Hassan. Hassan, right. Yes. Okay. Nice. Good to see you all. I appreciate you all. All right. So come, come to my center on May the 19th for Buddha birthday, okay? Okay. I'd love to. I'll see you there. All right. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. I right, see you then, okay? We uh, let's uh, end today, okay? Thank you. Have a good day.